Hello everybody and welcome to Coronaphobia Day 7. I'm here on No Force One. This is Adam Kokesh, Libertarian Party presidential candidate. And I gotta say, I had a wonderful debate this morning with a handful of the other front runners for the Libertarian Party nomination. We were joined today by Joe Jorgensen, Sam Robb, Ken Armstrong, Jacob Hornberger, and of course, Vermin Supreme. And now on No Force One, I am joined by, of course, Samantha Morgan Miller Kokesh sitting behind the camera making faces to make sure that I don't turn the camera around on her and of course David Clover our driver and join us Carl's Jr. in the front seat now I suppose we're gonna have plenty of uh, questions about how we're doing dealing with the virus ourselves if if indeed we have it uh, I'm still a tough call um, I I'm pretty sure we do I it's it doesn't matter, you know, and th this is really interesting. We got we had three big top stories I want to get into today. One, Rand Paul, the first U.S. senator coming down, uh, actually testing positive for the virus, currently asymptomatic, very healthy gentleman from everything I know. And uh, the videos coming out of Italy, the latest story, also that they are not treating people over 60 with ventilators at least. We got to read between the lines on a lot of these and especially what's going on in Los Angeles where they decided they're not even gonna try to test people anymore unless it would change the outcome for them based on their treatment being adjusted on the basis of their symptoms. So this is a really interesting story again to look at the implications of this, read between the lines and see what's really going on here. And I came up with another metaphor. If you caught me on, uh, on Facebook or Twitter uh, last night, I think it was, no, no, maybe it was this morning, but this is it. If you have a mosquito on your forehead and someone comes up to you and says, hey, let me get that for you, and then they punch you in the eye and take your wallet and run away, are you going to stand there and swat at the mosquito or are you going to go chase the guy with your wallet? And this is really important that we maintain our perspective in this time of crisis where we see a spasm of statism. We see government growing out of control. We see a horrific concentration of wealth and power, which is what this is really all about. What government has always been about making the rich richer and the poor poor. And this is a great example of them taking advantage of this state of fear. Now, I don't want to get conspiratorial here. I don't think that there's some master plan. And, and if anything, I think a lot, as, as is often the case, a lot of the conspiracy theories are distractions. You know, what was the virus from a, 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 a meat market in Wuhan? Was it from a weapons lab? Did, it, did the U.S. government send it to China? And you know what? It, it almost doesn't matter. Yes, we want to figure those things out when we have time to answer those questions. But right now, we have a much more urgent problem not just on the, the, the front of the virus itself, which is a real but relatively small health crisis, but the fear pandemic around it and people getting out of control and giving government more power. And we see it taking, again, it's, it's debt being issued, it's printing money, and of course it's not printed, it's digital. It's the bailouts, it's the shutting down businesses. And what we're not seeing yet is the long-term effects and, and, and getting used to what it's like with uh, America without small and medium businesses, a lot of them are going to fail. Now, Scott Fly, come on, Adam, there's always a plan when it comes to the government. Thank you for your question, or thank you for your comment there, Scott. Yes, I agree, this is planned. Not a singular master plan, though. There are a lot of people who are in positions of power in government, in the uh, banking system, in the regulatory system, in the medical industry, who are jumping on this to take advantage of it. All sorts of manipulators who say, oh, there's a chance to make people afraid, and of course, the mainstream media plays a role in this too. And it's the fact that we trust all of these people with this power that they shouldn't have, that when something like this happens, we see the manufactured crisis. Now, like I said, there's a real health crisis, but the manufactured crisis, the hoax that's being built around it, as Ron Paul called it, as I called it a month before he did, as so many others have now, that's the real problem. And I think already just as bad as things have gotten, it's pretty safe to say that more people are going to die in the long run from the economic downturn. 
And this is really important to remind people that as libertarians, when we say we want a free market because it leads to greater production that's of goods and services that meet human needs, we want human needs to be met. When you create inefficiencies in a market through the violence of government, it means we can't meet our potential. And it's not just, you know, less caviar and cigars, it's less life-saving medical procedures, it's less, uh, you know, Children going to bed hungry in this country, it, it, it or you know more children not going to it, whatever. However, I was doing that rhetorically. You get my point. It, it's uh, you know all these basic human needs. It, it, it's it, it's grandmas not having to live on cat food on social security. It, it's these basic life saving quality of life things that are always optimized under market conditions, peaceful conditions, not coercive conditions. And what we're seeing now is the worst takeover of government coercion in the market. It is, uh, you know, kind of socialism. I saw a great, um, I think it was from the Babylon Bee. Uh, we regret to inform you that America has tested positive for socialism and it cannot be contained while originally thought to be limited to populous states on the coasts. It is now throughout the country and is taking over and even the president has a bad case of socialism. We see this very clearly in the proposed takeover of companies that they're going to be bailing out with all of the government economic intrusions right now. And this is gonna kill so many small and medium sized businesses. And a lot of people have this delusion that government is gonna be able to preserve them. That, oh, we'll have handouts and bailouts and they're not just gonna bail out the massive corporations, they'll end up bailing out small businesses too. They can't, it's not possible. And a lot of these businesses that are going to be destroyed won't be able to come back. You're gonna see a lot of people struggling and ending up getting shepherded onto the big plantation of corporate America, the free market is gonna have a much less relevant role in the America that we see after this crisis if we don't fight back. And I mean resist martial law. If they tell you to shut down your business, don't. If they tell you to stay at home, and unless you know that you're gonna be putting someone at risk, don't. Go about your life. If you need to practice appropriate, not social distancing, but physical distancing, do it. If, uh, like us, and I, I will give the health update today too, if you feel that you might be contagious for whatever reason or a carrier, you know, same thing like if you have the flu, this is basic courtesy, it's still dealing with it the same way so that we can maintain our overall ability as a, as a country, as an economy to support the healthcare industry when you, we see it coming under extra burden. So in our case, uh, let's see, uh, I feel 90% better already, uh, you know, last night. Uh, I think I, I think I was 90% better. I had, a, I had a little bit of a runny nose, but you know, again, what could have been well within the normal range of what I have with, you know, little respiratory issues from allergies. Um, I was a little fatigued yesterday. I'm a little bit tired today, but I don't know. It might just be, it might be coronaphobia affecting me more than the coronavirus because I've got my face glued to my cell phone, you know, and, and yeah, Sam here is going like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is, you know, an opportunity for anybody who can pay attention to the news, who can offer a reason perspective to be a, a voice of reason on the virus and direct the appropriate attention to the government overreach that's happening right now to the, uh, you know, oh, thank you. Stephen Dye Jr. just commented, Trump, America will never be a socialist country. That was in his state of the union address. I think it was his first one. And I love that you did the uppercase, lowercase, so it looks like uh, idiot writing. So uh, this is a, an important time for us to, to stay cool, calm, and collected, to not panic, to make sure other people don't panic, and we direct our attention appropriately to the real threat. Socialism still kills more than corona. So today I'm feeling, you know, just... I mean, I felt fine. I, I got up early to do a radio interview today with uh, Willie Burton and Scotty. Uh, so Willie Burton is the uh, police commissioner who I met with in Detroit last week. Excuse me, and Scotty Bowman, uh, Libertarian Party activist and our new social media director, uh, introduced us. They do a radio show together Sunday morning, so they had me on as a guest today. It was a lot of fun. That should be online if you want to see that. It was. Um, Good, a good conversation with some callers, some challenging questions. And then we had the debate, and the debate today was for the Libertarian Party of Massachusetts because they have decided to go virtual with their convention. And it's, it's 
You know, I, I'm I'm a little torn on these events being canceled. I went to the one in Illinois uh, last Friday in Peoria, right before the one in uh, Detroit was canceled. Oh, excuse me, it was to be in Grand Rapids in Michigan. And I understand if people are scared, you don't want to scare them more. If people are super frightened of uh, of public gatherings, hey, here's a public gathering. And, you know, I did that. And at the time, I think it was a really good idea to say, look, hey, we're not afraid. We're going to keep going. I would still do that. But now there's a different level of fear set in. And so it might be the right thing. Uh, to cancel some public gatherings for political reasons, I hate to say it, not because of you know appropriate precautions. If I was in charge, what I would be doing is saying, you know, have your meetings, do the appropriate physical distancing. People who need a quarantine should quarantine. People who need care should get care or stay home to make sure that they don't need it. And that's, uh, you know, we'd still be able to carry on. But now that people have been, you know, frightened into a panic by the mainstream media, yeah, you don't want to spook them more. So the other analogy, and this was from a story that I uh, I shared on Facebook and Twitter, was that uh, it's like an elephant being attacked by a house cat who, in a panic, then jumps off a cliff and dies. And I don't think that's really a, a complete metaphor. It's a good one, but in reality, you know, if the cat is the virus and the elephant is society. You have to separate the bird on the elephant's shoulder who are the uh, the bankers and the politicians who are insider trading and profiting off of this, consolidating wealth and power, all that. And they're saying, you know, hey, jump off the cliff. And it's not really a cliff. So you're going to fall to your death. No, America's not going to die. There's no. I don't think this this curve of tyranny is, is, is going to keep going to the point of no return. But you're going to fall down a ravine. You're going to get bumped and bruised and injured, and it's going to suck, and we're going to be stronger and better able to control you. And if, if the elephant is kind of spooked, you know you don't want to further spook the elephant, but you want to tell the elephant, hey, don't listen to the crazy bird on your shoulder that's trying to get you to fall down the ravine and think that this house cat is something that, that justifies freaking out over. So we still want to have the attitude of calming people down, being cool, calm, and collected, and saying, look, we can handle this. It's not a big deal. Um, so we had a, we had the debate. I sorry. I want to say one more thing about the debate. Uh, props to the Libertarian Party of Massachusetts for for forging on, and they had a lot of people. I think it was forty something plugged in digitally live to that part of their meeting. They've got the business meeting happening uh, probably as we speak. Still, there they should be wrapping up just about now. And the uh, the moderator Dan Fishman, executive director of the Libertarian Party, did a great job. Kudos to Dan. And again, to all the officers, especially of LP Mass, who made that happen. I got a really great opportunity in this debate because I got criticized by some of the other candidates for hating the Constitution and hating the Bill of Rights. And one of them was saying, look, under Adam's plan, there are going to be 50 independent governments, and they could all be tyrannies, and so we need the federal government to protect us from them. And you go, didn't you just say that the market is better than the government? Your answer to small government is big government? You're taking the side of big government against small government. Look at where that's gotten us. No, smaller government, decentralization, transition to fully voluntary systems. That's the way. If you got, want to hold even a local government accountable, the answer is the market. You have competition between states. And once it gets down, even just past the federal level, voting with your feet will be a lot more meaningful. Wayne Foots, Ohio just put us under martial law. Mm -mm -mm. Kenneth Clements is asking like full-fledged martial law uh, and misspelling it like the uh, the amp coming out. I've always, I, I'm only uh, I'm only pointing this out. I'm not trying to be a grammar Nazi, but uh, our friend uh, G.I. Mary Jane, her son is named Marshall, not spelled like martial law. And uh, this is... Um, an interesting position where we are at right now because I don't think you're going to be, I don't think they're going to get away with full martial law. I know all martial law is sort of partial, but real full lockdowns enforcement. Now we are here in the Dallas Metro area right now. Uh, still not sure where we're going to go. Um, if there's someone in the area, actually, so Monday we have to be here for some RV repairs. Hey, if anybody can donate for that right now, we would really appreciate it. This thing is kind of being held together with bubble gum and duct tape right now, and we'd really appreciate a little professional help in dealing with some of these electrical issues. I got some switches I got to replace. Hopefully I don't electrocute myself doing that. We got to get an alignment. We got some kind of front end issue. If we have to drive back to Arizona, it's going to be tough. 
These are all legitimate campaign expenses because all of our travel with this bus has been for campaign purposes. <laughs> so you can donate to the campaign. If you want to make a gift to me personally and uh, you know everything that I have, I am putting into this campaign, into this effort, uh, in my life's work of activism to spread the message of freedom. So kokeshforpresident.com, you can donate there. If you go to thefreedomline.com, is that hooked up to my PayPal? I think it is. You can go to uh, thefreedom.fund. You'll find my personal PayPal there. If you want to donate anything else, if you want to help us out, if you're in Central Texas and you can get us a place to stay where we can just hook up a host to the RV, we're happy to maintain our physical distance just to be safe for everyone. Um, but it would be nice to have a place where we have Wi-Fi and can run an extension cord to the RV and a hose and uh, be able to, to take showers because now it's kind of a, a pain here with the bus. We haven't figured that out for a couple of days with all the other logistical priorities we have right now. And we're used to going to the gym to shower. And right now even, well, I don't know, are our gyms in Texas open? We haven't tried yet since we got here. Um, in any time fitness, they're, they're not. They're so not? Gyms are one of the first things to close down. Well, no, it was restaurants and bars, and a lot of places right. let gyms because stay open. Sit there, and the gym is like extra sweaty and city, and yeah, but it's all healthy people at the gym. Like, what are we? What? Are, and and so, uh, sorry, we got to yeah, finish I this. Our symptom that. update. Um, so I'm feeling, I'm feeling just a little bit tired today. I, I, you know, my throat is just a little bit rough. A tiny bit of the sniffles, all within kind of normal range of experiences. It was just that yesterday and the day before. I had this kind of unusual lower back pain that Sam has also experienced. I had a very, very minor fever, and I had I had just a little bit of a, a, a choking itchiness, not even quite a sore throat. And, you know, I've been talking a lot. I've been doing these lives every day. I've been doing debates and interviews all this time. So, again, hard to say. Is it is it something distinct? Looks like it. Maybe, maybe not. Not a big deal. And, and our response is going to be to sort of... Um, soft quarantine for for two weeks you know and uh at this point i today i would say really right now i don't have any more symptoms so maybe we're starting the uh the two week clock now uh david has, has actually taken it the best here i think the most asymptomatic david do you mind if i if i mention this that um My diarrhea. yeah you've had <laughs> he's, david has had some gastrointestinal issues over over the last couple of weeks hard to say if that's distinct enough to to, to think of it as something special a, a little extra sleep lately perhaps I mean, that's not unusual sleep. for you <laughs> yeah so maybe david is has gotten in, in completely asymptomatic sam how are you doing today feeling feeling mostly better just a little tired now yeah, I'm just tired. A little bit of the sniffles, the sore throat's gone. Any other distinctive symptoms at this point? No. no. That's it. So, like, you know, I, I said, uh, a couple of people asked me yesterday, are you going to take any medicine? Are you going to get tested? Are you going to get treatment? And there are a bunch of questions wrapped into that. It's a good transition to uh, to, our, to our top stories today. But in my case, like, I don't want to get tested because I don't want to be on their list, for one. Two, I don't want to slow things down at all. There are people who need to get tested, who need to get treatment. And this is really important for everybody. Don't lose your shit. Stay calm. Don't panic. Be cool. If you've got you know, minor symptoms, keep an eye on yourself. But don't go slow down the system because that's what's going to really suck for people who need treatment. If there are a bunch of morons and, and hypochondriacs going in, well, I got the sniffles. I think it's corona. Can you test me? No, and that's a big problem with the overreaction here is that all of a sudden everybody's a hypochondriac. I, you know, And even for me, I'm wondering, like, are, is this sympathy pain for my wife going through this? Mm -hmm. You know, am I am I just being, uh, being psychosomatic or hypochondriac? In some way I don't think so and I checked myself on that I was thinking about that everybody being a little more health conscious I mean that's a good thing for me I've always thought of myself as, as way more health conscious than average and and trying to lift people up with that that's one of the reasons I post uh, you know the occasional workout video or photo from the gym you know motivate inspire people to be a little more active and uh, you know enjoy their bodies enjoy their health and I think this is a good reminder of that so, a funky little flu, and we're over it, if that's what it is. And it seems like it's that or less, less for most people. Okay, so to Rand Paul, uh, we'll get to we'll, we'll get to uh, we'll get to L.A. and we'll get to Italy as well. But first, with we didn't we didn't really finish getting into this with Rand Paul. And the story that I saw, uh, man, I was right before starting this live. Uh, I don't know if someone wants to 
Well, I'm sure all the mainstream media outlets are, are you know, looking at this the same way. Uh, oh, look, Rand voted against the government money for COVID, and then he got it. How ironic. How perfectly appropriate. No, fucking bullshit. Just because you don't want the government to do something doesn't mean you don't want it done. In fact, generally it means you want it done better. If you care about something, you really want to keep the government as far away as possible. So kudos to Rand Paul for being the only one in the Senate to stand up. A couple of these votes were 98 to 1, uh, 99 to 1, uh, 98 to 0. I mean, just overwhelming votes. Just like huh, the Patriot Act, just like authorization for use of military force in, in Iraq and the global war on terror. When both parties get behind something like this, you should be scared. This is the thing to be afraid of. This is the bigger threat to your health than the virus. The way the government is responding is going to cause a lot more harm in the long run if it isn't already in the short run. So, Corey Culbertson, hey from Prescott, may need a good bug out location. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that for a second here. Um, w the place that we wanted to go here in Texas, we would have had... Uh, electricity and Wi-Fi and uh, and water and even a place we could have dumped our gray water we could have stayed in, in, in isolation and um, kind of done the self quarantine there but uh, they're a little nervous about uh, the, the liability with us going there and with uh, you know not they're not worried about the virus or being able to to maintain their distance from us in that circumstance but they, they are worried about having people there right now. And it's kind of sad that that's the effect of this. So we might be bugging out all the way to Arizona. If that's the case, we're going to be making some stops along the way to pick up supplies. We're going to need water. Um, we're going to need some more food. We're going to need gas, some more gas cans, keep the generator going. We're going to need to get the repairs done on the RV. If we don't, we're just going to be kind of stuck floating here in Central Texas. You know, there are plenty of other places uh, that, that I think... Would, would be willing to host us right now. So if uh, if, you, if you're in the Central Texas area, anywhere, uh, Dallas, Austin, and by the way, I've been talking to Daniel Hayes today. Daniel Hayes, big shout out to my man in charge of the Libertarian National Convention. Great dude, longtime Libertarian Party activist. And Daniel uh, saying that the shutdown order for the city of Austin is only in effect until May 1st. And it generally looks like we are going to be past the hump of this thing, over the hump, uh, have the curve flattened. Things I think are at least going to settle out. I don't think they're going to be able to keep the, the radical escalation in statism and martial law going for more than about a month. Pretty soon here, people are going to be a lot more angry than they are scared as that line comes down and, uh, you know, this line goes up. Uh, you know, I, I think things are going to get worse for a few more days. I think they're still getting worse right now. There are more lockdowns, stay-at-home orders. Chad Lemoyne, our Louisiana State Coordinator, just announced Louisiana just announced a stay-at-home order. There you go. Uh, Kenneth Clements, the biggest threat is the crashing economy, indeed. So, <clears throat> and, and uh, even not just for everybody who's going to be negatively impacted by this, but those in need because of the virus especially, and that's uh, just the, the real tragedy here. So, if you have thoughts, if anybody knows uh, someone in, in Central Texas who can help us out right now, we are planning on going down to Austin, of course, around... Uh, early begin early middle may depending on our logistical circumstances depending on funds and timing <laughs> surprise surprise nobody wants to donate to political campaigns right now and it was hard enough raising funds already generally speaking libertarians don't want to donate to primary campaigns Fortunately, we've raised a lot of money over the last couple of years because people are inspired by this message. And I hope you guys are inspired too when you see that what we're doing and, and, and what we represent now as a voice of reason in this conversation is a really important one to support and to help elevate to the national stage with the nomination. So Marcus Poulos, imagine, this is our press secretary joining us. Awesome. Thank you, Marcus. Imagine, what do you say? Uh, imagine the, the uh, We Are Free Party in Texas. Is that a party? We are free. Is that a Texas independence thing? Sorry, I don't know if I get the reference. Am I missing something? I just realized it's 334 Eastern and the asteroid should be passing right by us right now. Oh, hey, yeah, there's an asteroid passing by Earth and we barely noticed because we're all consumed with coronaphobia. Yeah, like 334 Eastern. So really right cool astrological event. Are we going to be... Uh, 
able to hear it or detect it, or is it just something that we're gonna we're well, gonna get the news be about? Right now, so we'll all right. See. Well, if anybody wants to check on that and let us know. Now, here we have a a good transition to the Italian videos. James Baldwin, six hundred and fifty one deaths today in Italy. So. I do. Well, you know, I guess I should finish talking about the the, the national convention, the Libertarian National Convention, scheduled for um, Austin, May 21 to 25. Please be there if you were planning on being there. Be there. Plan to be there. Make sure you firm up your logistics plans, especially in, in light of recent challenges. Make sure that you can get to Austin. If for some reason we can't stay at the hotel, see if you can arrange uh, alternative lodging, Airbnb, someone who can put you up there. We are going ahead with this one way or another. There is no way that they're going to keep the Libertarian Party down for two months in, with Corona as the excuse. Not worried about that at all. So please be ready to be in Austin in May. James Baldwin. 651 deaths today in Italy. I got to give a big shout out again to Daniel Hayes for one of his posts on Twitter, which was an I'll just leave this right here kind of post. And it was the, there's a death counter for the United States that shows how many people in the United States de die on, a, on an average day. There are 330 million of us. Can you guess? Can you guess how many? I'll, I'll wait. You want to comment now. If you can get it in on the live stream here, you want to guess. If you don't know, if you can give us a legitimate guess, I'm going to read some of these. How many people do you think die on an average day in the United States? This is really important for perspective. Again, you know, I made these analogies. Uh, well, I made the mosquito one. I shared the elephant one. But, you know, if... if um, you know, if, 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 if I say, hey, well, it's just a mosquito on your nose, you know, it's not really like, a, you know, it's, it's not the big threat. Government punching you in the face, taking your wallet, that's the big threat. I kind of have to be able to quantify what I mean by the mosquito or the house cat attacking the elephant, right? All right, here we have some guesses. All right. Okay, somebody knew the answer. Um, and I'm going to go in reverse order here because we've got, okay, Scott Fly, 24,000, not nearly that many, 7,000, getting closer, 15, 300, 267, way, way, way lower, 22,000, that is a little high, but Carl Crambeck, the first answer there was the correct one, of course, that's not precise, but 7,500, roughly 7,500 Americans die every single day in this country. And if you don't look at the causes of that and obsess over Corona as a cause of several hundred deaths, you are really doing a disservice to those other people who are dying from other entirely preventable healthcare problems. It's heart attacks, obesity, uh, you know, what is it, a, a type 2 diabetes, adult onset. It, it's chronic diseases that are based on lifestyle, lung cancer from, from smoking. You know, it, it's these kinds of things. We're not being healthy, not working out. Those are the reasons people die in America by far more than any of these diseases. And a lot of these things are exacerbated by socialist medicine. Yes, we have a mostly socialist medicine program in this country where every sector of the health industry is highly regulated and controlled by the federal government, in many cases actually run by the federal government or other government agencies. Talk about the VA, Medicare, Medicaid. This affects huge, basically the entire medical industry is polluted with socialism. Yes, it has a few uh, market aspects to it. You have some limited competition in some sectors. We see in things especially like, unfortunately, <laughs> plastic surgery and laser eye surgery. Like This is where costs come down. Things get more effective and more efficient, despite the government even in those sectors having a significant role in healthcare. So uh, James Baldwin, never thought of it like that. Thank you very much. So William Foyt, uh, Fo Fouts has uh, some numbers to add in here. If you look up on the CDC, 480,000 Americans die every year from smoking related illnesses. Meanwhile, this government that cares so much about our safety raked in $13 billion in cigarette taxes last year. Yeah, well, there you go. Follow the money. So <clears throat> uh, this is really important that if we truly care about the health of our fellow Americans, we take a reasoned perspective at the bigger picture. We look at what's really killing people. 
So, to our final top story, I know Sam's got some other important headlines she wants to get to, and we're going to get to more of your comments as well. Uh, the final one here is from Los Angeles, where they are no longer issuing tests to people for the coronavirus unless it would change the nature of their treatment as patients. So this is I, 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 now a lot of people are looking at this like, oh, my God, it got too far. Well, look, one of the ways it happened was that we were obsessed with testing as opposed to treatment. What if all of the effort that went to scrambling for tests at the last minute instead went to ventilators, if that's what's really needed. It's crazy to think that there's this huge misallocation of resources just because we let government control the information. Just because, and, and I hear I blame the Chinese government more than the American government for the secrecy, for silencing of doctors, for the general social media cens censorship, and it really was a terrible disservice to the whole world that that information was kept away from people. But in the United States, President Trump says, no, CDC needs to con conduct deliberations in private. People can't make rational decisions if they don't have complete information and that is one of the greater tragedies of this too here where we see look if we had instead of obsessing over tests and the government's automatic strategy of containment based on hey if you if you only have a hammer every problem looks like a nail right if all you can do is impose martial law and shut people down if you can't heal any diseases yourself if you can't allocate resources efficiently or effectively yourself or, or get voluntary investors and, and and for government the tool that they have is a gun and a money cannon that creates more problems than it solves, well, of course you're going to create these inefficiencies. You're going to get more people killed. That might be what we're dealing with right now. So again, back to my original point in terms of how you deal with this practically as an individual, don't panic. Stay cool, calm, and collected if you are experiencing symptoms. Don't go in for anything unless you really need to. Be vigilant. Up your self-care game. Up your sanitation and your hygiene. All those things are smart all the time anyway. But whatever you do, if you don't have to, don't go in and overload the system. So, like I said, in L.A., they're saying, look, if, if, if you come in and you want to get that, we're just going to turn you away and tell you, you know, just self-quarantine or do some kind of self-quarantine. But in L.A., they're giving up on this. So if the city of L.A., they announced this, the city and county of L.A. have given up on their strategies of containment, are they going to lift all the martial law restrictions? Are they going to let people go back to work? I kind of doubt it. And it's really unfortunate because that would allow people to take care of those who really need it better. So. I'm sorry, we got one more story here, and it's really two things that I want to talk about coming out of Italy, the fear-mongering here. Now, someone had a comment earlier specifically about Italy when I mentioned it. I want to see if I can pull this up. Something about 26%, and I think this was uh, a comment on them having a uh, higher population uh, of elderly people. Matthew Andrica, does the death rate include abortions if they shut down Planned Parenthood? Coronavirus would have saved more lives than it has taken. That's you now that's a crazy interesting point. I don't know about that. Uh, if you want to look at the death rate counter, and, and I, I, I highly doubt that it does, unfortunately, the way that we don't treat um, unborn as, as individual lives. Although an interesting thing that, that my wife and I figured out looking into the VA, when you go sign up for the VA, if, if you get pregnant while under VA care, they give, is, t tell me, Sam, remind me, what is it they do? They give you your, uh, they give you a separate account or create a, yeah, a social security number for you, the, for the unborn child. They give your unborn child a social security number and full benefits and take care of the mother as well. Yeah, so it's really interesting that they have that different approach, that the VA has a, a higher respect for life in that sense. Okay, so here's the comment. Scott Fly, Italy's population is made up over 26% over the age of 65. Death numbers aren't exactly honest. So thank you for that exact wording there because it's about the honesty in the presentation of these numbers. Anytime you have an overwhelming wave of fear like we're experiencing right now, sensationalism is going to pay, play a large role in what stories get reported. So on Drudge Report, and that's one of the main sources that I'm going to right now, a uh, great collection of headlines, aggregator for news, although I do think uh, that, that Matt Drudge here is playing into 
the sensationalism just a little bit. I think he could be doing a better job of, of sharing some of the, the reassuring stories that are out there. For example, 99% of the deaths of patients in Italy were from people with pre-existing conditions. Who knows? Maybe the 1% had them and didn't know them until they died from corona-related issues. But I think there's a really gross misrepresentation here. One of the stories I saw in Drudge Report was... Uh, survivors of coronavirus share their story well hey i had the sniffles for a day and then i tested positive and then uh i self-quarantined and i didn't notice anything else and then i went back to work that's not a story worth telling they don't tell those stories but those would be the dominant stories in in the toll of, of what it's really like to get coronavirus is that you don't even notice it at all and that's, that's that's the real unreported story here so is this going to get to a bigger uh stage of, of, of government, you know, uh, takeover of the economy with martial law. It's important that we dispel the fear. So Robert Griffiths writes, amazing how many libertarians are falling for this nonsense. Yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed in some of my fellow libertarians, but I understand that if you don't have the uh, historical background, if you don't have the confidence in your philosophy, if you don't have a confidence in your understanding of what government is and how the non-aggression principle really is a universal moral principle that anytime it's violated is going to have disastrous effects, if you don't have a sense of history of how government uh, inflates these kinds of crises and, and exaggerates things, it is really easy to get swept up in the fear, at least the one, well, I don't know what's going on, better just be extra, better be safe than sorry. And the thing is, uh, my, my campaign man Elijah did a great post on this. No, it's not better to be safe than sorry when you're going to be sorrier about what you're saying to do to be safe than what you would be sorry about. So check that out. If you want to go down on my Facebook feed, Elijah Gitzarelli shared his post on that. So now to the heart of this segment, I guess you could say, the videos that are getting out from Italy. Now, if anybody has seen any other videos who's watching this right now, other than what I'm going to start, uh, the one I'm going to describe that I just watched, comment here, share the links. If there's something I'm missing, I want to know. But what I saw was this hugely sensationalist story on NBC where the reporter holding the microphone is in a full body suit with a mask and goggles and rubber gloves and... I just, I, I, I love this. I saw another picture of, uh, you know, someone making a meme where the reporter is in front of the camera uh, fully suited up and the cameraman is behind the camera wearing normal clothing. Hello? If this was really a threat, they'd all be hazmatted up here in hazmat suits. But we've seen this before and again if you haven't been paying attention if you haven't been really plugged into the counter narrative of what the government tells you what the mainstream media tells you you might not see this right away and i understand there are a lot of libertarians who need some help who need some time to deconstruct the fear and how they've been scared into overreacting to this Think about some of the hurricane reports we've seen over the last couple of years sensationalizing global warming. You'll see a reporter in, uh, you know, with with a really dramatic background and you know in full rain gear and and rubbers everything and and uh, you know acting like they're uh, you know in, in the middle of a crazy windstorm. And then you zoom out. There's a great photo of this. I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact incident uh, maybe someone can pull it up but there's there's like you, you from the picture that they're showing on TV you see the reporter and it looks really really bad and they're super dressed up and then you zoom out and the, the cameraman's in normal clothes and there's like two dudes walking in shorts going about their business so you have to look behind these headlines this story from Italy about hospitals being overwhelmed I don't think it's baseless. I think it is grossly exaggerated though and we need to really look at the actual hard evidence, not the sensationalist headlines. And so what they showed in this video was people in ventilators with these bubbles over their heads and they go, look, this isn't even an ICU. This is the emergency room and we've got all these people. And then, then they don't show other parts of the hospital overwhelmed. They show there's a hallway with some people sitting in it and there's one room that's full of beds and there's like, I, I what, like 12, uh, 12 patients, maybe 16 in there. They're not like showing the evidence. I'm, I'm really kind of surprised here. So if, if again, if anybody has anything they want to share, 
to tell me I'm wrong or there's something that I'm missing in this. Again, with the death counts, two things. One, I guarantee they're overreported, and we're going to see that come out in the statistics much later here. And they are certainly overreported as proportions of cases because, as we know, way more people have this thing than are being tested or reported or treated in, in any sense. And, uh, and, and, and two, it's, it's not an excuse for what they're doing in response to this. I, I don't see, uh, you know, I, I've seen on social media some people spreading the fear um, with, with caskets and, and other things like, okay, Chad, I see just texted me a video, Chad, I can't go to text during a Facebook Live without it interrupting the stream. But if you want to put the link in a comment or describe what it is, uh, if there's something I'm missing, I'll read it right here. Um, so Robert Griffith says, best to look away, ignore, and move on with life, not to participate in the madness. Robert, I, you know, I, I kind of agree, but I also want to really powerfully disagree. There is a freak out happening. There is a surge in statism happening, a surge in socialism and tyranny in martial law. We need to be paying attention to that to combat it. And the way government is getting away with this is by ginning up fear. So no, it's not okay. If, if, if you're in a position to provide leadership to help out to just say I'm just I'm just gonna look away no we have to actively engage and 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 help tamp down this fear and put people's attention on the real threat that is government otherwise it's gonna be affecting us too now for someone like me that might mean hey I gotta go you know post up in in the mountains in Arizona at my place in the in my 10 acres of the garden of freedom um, you know you might have to hunker down in different ways if you can get out and and go about your normal life and just take appropriate sanitation hygiene precautions I say you do it resist martial law do not th let them shut down your business do not let them shut down your life that is feeding into their plan and it, it is not a master plan It is not just a singular grand conspiracy but it is fitting into their general plan to concentrate wealth and power in the hands of government, the cronies, the friends of people in power, and so that the poor can get richer, excuse me, the rich can get richer and the poor can get poorer. I want to turn that thing on its head. That's how we do this with localization. So I want to thank uh, Robert. Your view on this from the stars has been good. I hear you. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate you listening. Um, now, Michael Turner, a friend of mine was actually in the Exeter Hospital. I'm sorry, Michael. I don't want to connect because I haven't done it in a live stream like this. If we want to practice it later, I, I, I might be open to that. But please, um, if, if you want to put anything, if, if there are any data points that I'm missing, put them in the comments right now. I'm going to read them. I want to know if I'm missing something. Um, Michelle Anderson Loveless, what I'm seeing is the blue jean workers are still working, just not the suit and skirts. Yeah, no, and it's funny. We're starting to see uh, how many jobs can be done remotely, how many can be done from home. Um, James Baldwin, it's being used as a false flag. I think that's a very good comparison. Obviously, it doesn't meet the definition of a false flag unless we find out later that the virus was generated by government. But absolutely, it is following a lot of the same dynamics of fear, manipulation, the invisible enemy, and now Donald Trump is a wartime president. Yeah, okay. So... Uh, Marcus Mitchell sounds good, but it's all mere talk. Unless you get started as of right now, you are a puppet against humanity, against freedom, against life itself. Serving your Israeli masters. Um, I'll try to read better comments. Uh, let's see. Marcus Mitchell, the same way the government used 9-11 to instill fear in order to gain access to our privacy and push their agenda. Okay, last chance here. Uh, get your comments in if there's something I'm missing. We're going to come back to comments, but... I'm not seeing any. No one is saying I'm missing anything here. It seems like every, like no one can refute these basic points that I'm making that that put this way down in scale. So I'll just say um, one more thing. Um, wow. Okay. Hold on a second. LPMC is that Libertarian Party Mises Caucus wouldn't let you post the Ron Paul. I don't think it was them. Libertarian Party Mises Caucus would not be censoring Ron Paul. That's happening as a Facebook thing. They ping Dr. Paul's article specifically, and it's bullshit. Look at the explanation. Um, I hope someone screen capped all that because I, I I screen capped the main thing. But if you go to there's a link that they send you to. They say they where they actually try to refute Ron Paul's points, and it's really disgusting. Uh, just just absolute logical fallacy. 
crazy. It's total nonsense. So one more thing I want to say before we uh, we get on to Sam's headlines here is that, and this is just a reminder, whatever the mortality rate they're saying is, and originally it was 3.4%, then 1%, it's going to keep going down because we're going to see there's so many more people who have this who have never been tested, who never show symptoms, and we're going to see eventually... I'm I'm guessing now we are we're already seeing that the, the the death rates the mortality rates are coming down 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 they're not going to go up unless there's some crazy mutation but all the reporting is over reporting and distortion in favor of sensationalism and fear mongering they're going to keep going down and so what you're going to see is uh, this coming real like the, the higher estimates were well this is it's a one percent mortality rate so it's ten times that of the flu now we're going like. No, you know, it's going to come down another scale again. At most, we're looking at somewhere between same as the flu, 0.1% or maybe 0.5%. Again, just from what I'm seeing in the trend and how I'm anticipating the over-reporting being put into perspective. All right, so now, my dear, to your headlines. Hmm. So just to take a break from the coronavirus stuff, I found some really, really cool articles. Um... Did you know the Arctic Ocean has chlamydia? The Arctic Ocean has chlamydia. <laughs> We've so, been bumping and grinding with other planets. <laughs> so the international team of researchers has discovered diverse and abundant chlamydia living in deep Arctic Ocean sediments. <laughs> um, as well as pretty much every wild koala bear. <laughs> so koalas in our Arctic Ocean have chlamydia. Huh. And... Um, the actual uh, organism they live under oxygen devoid conditions and high pressures without an apparent host so that's cool our ocean has chlamydia <laughs> okay yeah hold, so hold on just i gotta interrupt with another comment here but that is really the ocean it's sort of like everybody in america has herpes and genital warts Gen no, general warts is a real common one. Oh, yeah, no, it HPV. Is. 90 percent of sexually active people in America have HPV, oh, God, and it's just like, hmm. Uh, okay, so Robert Griffiths, uh, reporting on the Libertarian Party Mises cock is possible dust up with Ron Paul. Adam, they are caught up in it. They worship Ron, so that's why it's interesting. It wasn't Facebook. Read their posts, and you'll see. So I really appreciate your clarity and strong position on this. I've been doing my best as well to comp folks. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, it, it, like I said, it, I. I I would have thought better of the Mises Caucus. I'll bet most members of the Mises Caucus are on, aren't caught up in this. Maybe it's I'm still wanting to give them the benefit of the doubt. Even the leadership, maybe it's uh, maybe hopefully hopefully it's just the Facebook admin. But you know, like with uh, a lot of state conventions being canceled, some uh, appropriately, some unnecessarily. Yeah, there are a lot of libertarians who you know maybe are new to this movement, haven't studied enough of the evils of government or enough history of the evils of government to be in a position that when something like this happens, to view it in real time with that proper perspective. All right, next up, babe. Okay. Um, an American and German astrobiologist uh, pair found uh, organic compounds called theophenes that are present in crude oil on Mars. What does that mean? There's oil on Mars. There's oil on Mars. How about that? Just just in time for us to invent self-driving electric cars. And our space force. <gasps> space force drilling for oil, oil on Mars on other yeah. planets. Yeah, many of them are biotic. The organ, uh, the molecular compound, the they're biotic, meaning they involve life. So that's pretty cool. Um, scientists found more than a hundred tiny worlds hidden in the solar system just beyond Neptune's orbit. There are 139 new planets. Wow! Welcome to the family, new planets. Yes. Uh, is there any, uh, th these are all out of the range of the possibility of life on like Mars, which has a reasonable exposure to the sun. These are usually beyond Pluto. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. It's freezing out there. They were, they were just discovered. They were just discovered while um, scientists were looking for dark matter. So we don't know if they're going to be classified as dwarf systems or stars or planets like Pluto or what. So there's more information that will be coming out on that soon. Um, there was a little brief article on three more asteroids joining this new one passing right by us, but no, it won't hit us. Um, 
Hey, you know, I, I mean, I, just to turn this back to coronaphobia, because this is coronaphob the coronaphobia show. It might transition. It might, as of tomorrow, just become Adam versus the man is now live on Facebook, 3 p.m. Eastern time every day. Um, but uh, to hear about these monumental scientific yeah. discoveries, while no one's paying attention, and and you have to wonder how much does it cost in terms of slowing all of that down. People not being able to go to labs, forwarding human progress. Like, what What if we find out, here's, you want me to, I'm going to turn the fear on it. I'm going to make people more scared of government now and the, and the coronaphobia, ready? What if, because you were freaking out about coronaphobia, people from NASA stayed home and they didn't detect the asteroid that's going to hit us and we weren't ready in time because of coronaphobia and we overreacted. Okay, that's silly. That's not going to happen. But what, like, these are the things to be really afraid of is all the ways that these are actually setting us back in measurable ways now is it is it going to be we can't catch the asteroid no i don't i don't think it's no but the japanese point, but... spacecraft tried to fire a cannonball into this one wasn't oh it? yeah well that was it was it was like a probe i i it was mission a wasn't it they fired a cannonball into an asteroid but it was for scientific purposes wasn't it <laughs> i'm hoping so um, I was reading the uh, the article and then it disappeared magically. So. All right, well I got a couple. Oh, another uh, couple cool comments here. Big story that was missed. Um, we covered this actually the first day we did this that they've cured HIV. Yep. Like that sexual revolution thing. possibly around the corner. This is really exciting we news. Cure HIV and our Arctic Ocean gets chlamydia. Yeah, right. But this was the, the story last week was second patient treated successfully in uh, the UK for that. A couple other comments I want to read here. Joseph Nudd, make politicians scared again. Wouldn't that be nice? And another one from Robert Griffiths. More libertarians are doubting the pandemic, but it's still surprisingly low, better than the common population for sure. Now, just again in perspective, you know, most people aren't freaking out. I think there's a little bit of a bias in the libertarian community towards freaking out because we read the news a lot, because we're paying attention a lot. In that sense, we're generally more susceptible when it's uh, overwhelmed with fear. Um, but most people aren't news heads like us. They're not super plugged into current events. You know, walking around here in Texas, even yesterday, someone who just saw the bus came up and was like, hey, you know, I just want to let you know I've been exposed. You might not want to shake my hand, fist bump, elbow. And he was like, no, let's shake hands. And it, it, uh, this is a, a really important, bigger statistic to keep in mind. Uh, shared this yesterday. Among Democrats, 30% say they're going to, uh, avoid large gatherings and among Republicans it's uh, no sorry um, only in, in among Democrats 70% uh, of them are going I have the, the percentage reverse 70% of Democrats are going to avoid large gatherings as a result of coronavirus only 40% of Republicans so there is a greater skepticism right now probably because of Trump's initial position on this but I will say no more defending Trump anymore guys it, it's yeah I mean if it wasn't fucking embarrassing enough you're not embarrassed I'll be embarrassed for you okay yeah it is really ridiculous now to see how Trump either got this so radically wrong and turned to socialism in a time of crisis or was unable to stand up to the fear-mongering when we needed a leader who was able to say look let's put this in perspective what what else you got babe any other headlines new species of a deep sea crustacean was found with plastic from our ocean pollution already in its stomach and was named after the plastic to hope uh, in the hopes it would highlight our need to cut back on our plastic waste hmm yeah yeah not again I'm, I mean I just Putting things in perspective, how many more people are going to suffer as a result of runaway pollution that we're just not paying attention to when we could be finding better ways to deal with this and getting rid of government's contribution to the pollution problem? Well, I, turning it back to the coronavirus, I thought that we just need a little break from it. A little break. Yeah. Um, the Peace Corps isn't just bringing home 7,300 volunteers from 61 different places because of the coronavirus, it's firing them. So you have to wonder about their benefits too. Oh, I just gotta say again, my heart goes out, especially to everybody in the service industry right now. It's really, really bad time for everyone and especially small 
local business owners, you are going to be hurting. And I do think this is a deliberate plan to shut a lot of you down. And we need to fight back. We fight back with truth, with facts, with perspective, with just calm, reasoned examination of what's going on here. 5,500 National Guard troops deployed to combat the COVID-19 from the Air and Army in 32 states as of Saturday. Now, there's one thing that I would support that's sort of like, as long as we have this system, let's use it well, right? You know, as long as the military controls all these resources, let's do something good instead of bad with them. There might be a really appropriate role for the deployment of the military in terms of medical units and medical units only. If the military has medical resources that are essentially sequestered from general population use being put to service of real human needs, then yeah, they should release them. They should set up field hospitals. They should activate all the medical personnel where there is a real demand. But anything beyond that, totally inappropriate, absolutely going to make it worse, totally scary that the martial law threat is coming. And I honestly, uh, I, I don't know where this is going. I will, I, got, I can't get through this broadcast without sharing my updated yeah. uh, level the curve graphic. Uh, and for everybody flatten the looking curve. at this horrific mess of Sharpie, I will be making a nice, neater, easier to follow graph tonight. You can tell I was an art major, right? Okay, so we did this uh, during the show the last couple days. Everybody knows the graphic with the flattened curve, with the spiked curve, with this hypothetical that we get over this point of overloading the healthcare system where we have more patients than beds and ventilators and things like that. And if we flatten the curve, although I gotta say there are medical arguments against flattening the curve uh, for a lot of reasons. I've seen some of those out there. I don't know. I just know that we should have trustworthy people making these decisions for us, not CDC officials doing it in secret because Trump ordered it that way. So there are a couple other curves on this chart, as you may have noticed, and these are the important ones, the curve of tyranny. And it doesn't curve up. It doesn't follow an organic curve. There's an incident here, right? There's people start freaking out about the coronavirus and the ratcheting up of government goes kind of straight up. And now I, I'd like to think it's leveling off a little bit. This is what I'm projecting is the most likely path. There are a couple alternatives. Maybe it stops right here. Maybe we find the cure tomorrow and government can't get away with doing anything else. People get angry really fast. Uh, faster than they get they stay scared at least and government won't be able to get away with any more but even if that's the case it doesn't level off like a virus it stays in a long pattern with a tail that is going to be really hard to fight and so we have the the worst case possibility of tyranny spiking of the curve not being flattened at all and this is going up to more martial law forced vaccinations shutdown of business socialization of national industry this is what we need to avoid right now we need to tamp down the fear so that government cannot get away with taking us to this point I think we have too much bad momentum here with martial law right now. It is going to continue for a while, at least a few more days, and it's going to kind of level off. The thing is, it's not going to flatten out. And these steps that I've shown here and up here are really over a much longer timeline than would fit on this chart because governments don't take on power with the intent of relinquishing it. Each one of these little steps down represents a major fight to get our freedom back. The sooner we put an end to this curve of tyranny accelerating, the, the partial martial law accelerating, the going to mandatory vaccinations and shutdowns and socialization of the economy, this is what we need to fight, and the sooner we do it, the easier it's going to be. Flatten the curve. And what I'm hoping, the last element of this, is that we come to this point that we're able to turn it around here instead of letting it peter out and step down over years. Hopefully we've learned the lesson of government over time, and we're going to see a big positive reaction away from government as people realize just how shitty it's been making things worse over the corona crisis. So, uh, any other headlines we need to cover today, babe? Any comments on my uh, my my chart there? It's I um, keep getting it's hideous. You need help, um, Donnie. You get the point. Donnie it, said that he needs to help you with your drawing skills, and I reminded everybody I will be making something much neater and easier to follow and better to look at tonight. Yeah, I do think this graphic is going to be relevant for some time. So, um, I guess Sam's on top of it. it Yep. Excuse me, if anybody else wants to do their own version before she gets to it, or if they see hers, they want to take it, we're all open source here. Um, 
So we want to we want to share information, and especially we want to keep doing these broadcasts every day, so that we hear from you, and we have this community around this conversation of people who have this perspective, who want to fight back. Because honestly, aside from what we're doing now, spreading the truth, spreading a, a message of reassurance, uh, of standing up to government, of maintaining our awareness of the bigger threat, that's the most important thing. I hope I get the chance as the nominee for president of the Libertarian Party to take this message and this perspective to the bigger scale and and help America learn the lessons if you're motivated by this and I'm so flattered there's so many great comments today that I haven't read that I haven't read out loud that I'm seeing of, of just beautiful uh, support for this message please get involved with the campaign right now again if you can donate it would be hugely helpful just to us being able to maintain our logistic positioning and bringing you these videos every day possibly from back home at the Garden of Freedom in Arizona possibly from somewhere here in Central Texas. Who knows? Chris Learson writes, Adam Kokesh, here in Australia, we are in martial law at the moment with borders to catch uh, to each state having been closed down. Yeah, so I'm afraid of that possibility here too in the United States. It might get to that level of worse before it gets better that we see a... Um, at least a shutdown of interstate travel except for trucks. I, I don't think they're going to be able to, that, that might be the edge. I don't think they're going to get away with with a whole lot more in the United States. Joey Lee, GI Mary Jane, thank you so much for posting at thefreedomline.com. You can find all of my good stuff on the internet there from, well, here it's on my screen. I'm sure it's down there on yours. Thefreedomline.com. Please go find Kokesh for president.com. Donate if you can. Join our email list. Follow me here. We're going to be doing these at least for the time being, possibly indefinitely. I'm digging this format. Let me know if you all are doing an hour live straight every day with our peanut gallery, David over there in the driver's seat on the other side of the RV, and Sam right here at the table with me and uh, being able to feed me headlines and comments. So before I wrap up, babe, any uh, any other comments we should get to? Any other? Oh, look at all that love and thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Mwah. Mwah. Thank you so much for making this possible. Uh, I really feel the love. Through the Facebook iconography of thumbs up and hearts in the bottom of the screen, I feel your love. But in all the things that y'all have done as, as fans and supporters of me and, and, and my perspective and, and supporting this message over the years, I'm here because of you. If it wasn't for people donating, watching, sharing, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. The last thing I wanted to get to was letting everybody know that Costco and other stores won't be accepting returns and refunds on items like toilet paper, paper towels, <laughs> sanitizing wipes, water, rice, and Lysol. All right. And on that note, please find us at thefreedomline.com. Email me, adam at thefreedomline.com. Have a beautiful day. Don't panic. Resist martial law. Mwah. Peace and love, y'all.